Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe and vote in the poll for cooler beverages next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the Master of Frosty Fatalities Sub-Zero. His rivalry with Scorpion is legendary, but it seems like things have calmed down and everybody is cool. For now. Let's start off by figuring out our goals for this build. First, ice is nice, so we'll get some of that. Next, we'll make sure we're a master of the martial arts, and finally, we'll get some frosty armor, so hopefully the fatalities aren't used on us. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll all you want, just keep those multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma's gonna be number one for frosty spells. Dexterity after that for our kung fu skills and our AC. Wisdom will follow with the Lin Kuei being very well composed. We have constitution to make sure that we don't die in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Strength is a a little lower than I'd like, we just don't really need it, and we're gonna dump intelligence. Kai Lang was raised to be an assassin, not a librarian. Sub-Zero is a human, even after everything that's happened. We need to go for a variant human to make sure that we can get every spell I want. The Magic Initiate feat lets you take a couple of cantrips and a spell from the Warlock list without the inconvenience of selling your soul. Armor of Agathis is for Warlocks and Tieflings only. You can cast it once per day, covering you in a frosty shell that gives you five temporary hit points, and it forces creatures that hit you with a melee attack to take five cold damage. Chill Touch is a spell with a 120-foot range, not touch, that deals 1d8 necrotic, not cold, damage on a hit and prevents the target from healing one round. Just pretend you're giving someone some frostbite. Speaking of frostbite, frostbite is a spell from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It forces a constitution save of 8, plus your charisma modifier and your proficiency bonus, and deals 1d6 cold damage on a failure. It also forces disadvantage on the next weapon attack of the creature you used it on. We can also level up two stats of our choice, go for charisma and dexterity. For your skill of choice, go for stealth, you're a trained ninja. And for the background, take soldier, that gives you athletics and intimidation proficiency. We're gonna kick things off as a monk. First level monks can grab two skills from the monk list, go for acrobatics for sweet flips, and history for long lore monologues. You get unarmored defense, making your AC 10, plus your dexterity and your wisdom modifiers. There's also martial arts, which gives you proficiency with monk weapons, so any simple weapon that isn't heavy or two-handed, or a short sword. For flavors, say they're all made of ice, they won't deal cold damage, but I'm pretty sure people getting impaled on your icicles aren't asking for a coat. These deal a minimum of 1d4 damage, as do your unarmed attacks, and you can add your dexterity to unarmed attacks and make extra unarmed attacks as a bonus action after making the initial one or attacking with one of your monk weapons, so you can really juggle your opponents with style. Bouncing over to Sorcerer now, first level sorcerers can learn four cantrips of their choice. Ray of Frost is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage damage to a target within 60 feet, and slows their movement by 10 feet. Blade Ward functions like a block, reducing bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage by half for one round. Those are the only two I really want, other than the ones we stole from the Warlock list, so just take whatever sounds good after that. For your two first level spells, Ice Knife is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 piercing damage on a hit, and then the knife explodes and deals 2d6 cold damage to creatures within 5 feet of the target that fail a deck save. Throwing a knife into someone's face and then blowing it up, that feels pretty Mortal Kombat to me. Shield lets you add 5 to your AC as a reaction. So throw up a quick ice wall and keep yourself safe. You can also choose a sorceress origin. Draconic Bloodline will reveal that at some point in your 23 and Me results, there's a dragon. Choose a silver dragon, they're the cold breathing ones that aren't dicks. You can learn Draconic and it doubles your proficiency bonus when intimidating dragons. Finally, you get Draconic Resistance, which gives you extra HP for every level of sorcerer you take and AC equal to 13 plus your dexterity modifier while you're not wearing armor, which is actually a buff from Monk, so hooray. We're really doing this for later abilities and because Wizards of the Coast hasn't really revealed their Elsa subclass for sorcerers, so Draconic Ancestry is our best bet for our frosty boy. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic that has two sorcery points in it for now, you get another one every time you level up in this class, and that helps you recover spell slots at this level. There's more fun stuff on the way though. For your spell grab mage armor, it gives the target you touch AC equal to 13 plus their dexterity modifier while they're not wearing armor. I know you can already do this from your Draconic Ancestry ability, but it's not concentration, it lasts a whole hour, and could help out a squishier party member. You've got a whole clan of ninjas to protect, keep them safe. Third level sorcerers get second level spells, and Snillox Snowball Swarm might sound a little silly, but it's a great spell. It creates a 5 foot radius sphere that forces a deck save. Creatures that fail that take 3d6 cold damage, and creatures that succeed take half. You also get meta magic, letting you add a little extra oomph to the spells you cast. Quicken Spell costs 2 sorcery points and lets you cast a spell that would normally take an action in a bonus action, so you can bump it into a combo. Empowered Spell lets you spend a sorcery point to re roll an amount of damage die equal to your charisma modifier on a spell you cast, making sure you get that fatality. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement or a feat. The elemental adept feat lets you pick a damage 
damage type. Surprise, we're going for cold. Creatures that resist cold damage don't resist that from the spells you cast now, and you can re-roll ones and twos on damage type. For the spell at this level, grab hold person. It forces a wisdom save on a creature. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute, depending on your concentration, so you can freeze them and get the combo started. Back to monk now. Second level monks get key points they can use on certain abilities. Step of the wind lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance for that turn. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, and flurry of blows lets you burn some meter to make two unarmed attacks instead of one as a bonus action. You also get unarmored movement, which increases your speed while you're not wearing armor. Third level monks can better handle those projectile spammers with deflect missiles. It lets you reduce ranged attack damage by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and your monk level. If you drop that down to zero, you can throw it back at them as a monk weapon, dealing 1d4 damage for now. You can also choose a monastic tradition, and the way of the four elements lets you choose an elemental discipline. Shape the flowing river lets you spend a key point to move water in a 30 foot square. You can raise it up 15 foot high or 15 feet lower and then freeze it so you can run all over it. Now the player's handbook specifies that you can't hurt anyone with this, but if I'm your DM and you set up something cool enough to hurt someone with it, go ahead but I'm probably not your DM. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. You also get an ability score improvement, bump up your charisma for frostier spells. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one as an action. And you can still make an unarmed attack as a bonus action or two with a flurry of blows. You also have stunning strike, which lets you force a constitution save of eight plus your proficiency bonus and your wisdom modifier when you hit someone with a monk weapon. Failing that, they're stunned until the beginning of their next turn. Now I actually messed this up in the Black Panther video. I said that they were paralyzed, not stunned. Here's the difference. Stun targets fail all dex and strength saves, and attacks against them have advantage. This can really work well with some of your sorcerer spells. Your monk damage also increases to a d6 instead of a d4. Back to sorcerer now, fifth level sorcerers can cast third level spells. Sleet Storm creates a 20 foot tall, 40 foot radius cylinder that makes difficult terrain, and trips up anyone who fails a dexterity save inside, and it interrupts concentrating casters, forcing them to make a constitution save. So for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Sixth level draconic sorcerers get elemental affinity, letting you add your charisma modifier to damage from cold spells, and you can spend a sorcery point to get resistance to cold damage for one hour. For your spell, Water Walk lets you and 10 friends walk on liquids, including everything from water to lava, for an hour. The great part is you can cast this as a ritual by spending 10 minutes, so no spell slots needed. 7th level sorcerers can cast 4th level spells. Ice Storm creates a cylinder similar to Sleet Storm, but deals 2d8 bludgeoning damage and 4d6 cold damage to creatures that fail a deck save inside. Like Sleet Storm, it turns the area into difficult terrain until the end of your next turn. This is a pretty good ice spell, but we'll actually get a better one in a couple levels. 8th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, and here we can cap our charisma, making sure our ice is dealing as much damage as possible. 9th level sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Cone of Cold deals 8d8 cold damage to creatures that fail a constitution save and a 60 foot cone in front of you. This is the full-on fatality ice spell. Back to monk now, 6th level monks have key empowered strikes, meaning that your fist count is magical in terms of overcoming resistances. You can also use water whip, which lets you spend 2 key points to hit a creature within 30 feet of you that fails a dexterity save. It deals 3d10 bludgeoning damage and 1d10 extra damage per key point you spend. You can also knock the target prone or pull them up to 25 feet closer to you. If they succeed on the save, they take half damage and you can't move them. Make this a big old ice hammer for flavor. 7th level monks get evasion, which lets you take half damage on fail saves and no damage on successful ones. There's also Stillness of Mind, which lets you spend an action to remove an effect of Charm or Frightening. It's kind of hard to picture Sub-Zero being afraid of anything. Eighth level monks get an ability score improvement. We'll invest in Dexterity now for better punching and armor. Ninth level monks can now run up walls or over water while they're not wearing armor. This is only when you're still moving, so it's not like Water Walk, which lets you stand on the liquids. Tenth level monks get Purity of Body, which makes you immune to poison and disease, which checks out as Sub-Zero is one of the few characters who hasn't missed a Mortal Kombat tournament due to a sick day. Our Capstone is 11th level of monk, which is mostly for the d8 monk damage die, but you might as well grab Clench of the North Wind. This lets you spend three key points to cast Hold Person with your Wisdom modifier. Technically, it's a little bit worse than casting it with your Charisma modifier, but it's a good spell and can really come in clutch if you need it. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you can deal a lot of damage with your Ice Spells and your Draconic Ancestry. You're also valuable as a melee fighter with extra attacks, key empowered strikes, and flurries you can still hit hard when you run out of slots. Finally, you're actually a pretty helpful utility caster with Mage Armor and Water Walk, really helping out for mobility and protection. As far as weaknesses go, you don't have a ton of hit points, somewhere in the 120 range, which doesn't bode well for a murder tournament. There's also the issue of Ice Spells just being a little weak. Comparing Ice Storm to Fireball, they do comparable damage, and Fireball uses a third level slot instead of a fourth. Speaking of technically weak things, Way of the Four Elements is pretty well known for being underpowered. Kensai, Shadow, and Open Hand all offer better scaling abilities. But you're not playing Sub-Zero to play a top tier, it's about being cool. Freeze everything, then shatter them with big punches. Just make sure that you're using everything in your complicated kick, otherwise you'll be on the receiving end of a fatality.
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We've got Scorpion going live on Thursday. Now that we've covered some Mortal Kombat characters, I think we should dive into the other big fighting game franchise, Street Fighter. Vote in the poll for Blanca, Zangief, or Vega. Be sure to come back next week for a royal good time.